All right, everybody, we had some technical glitches here, and that's why we're starting a little bit late, but we'll still hold it for 90, uh, 90 minutes. It's about 10 after. Um, so I'm going to tell you right now what we did. Uh, I happened to t take this image while I was doing uh, some location painting in Santa Barbara about two weeks ago. And I was going through images I wanted to paint today and decided I'd come up with something a little bit more interesting color variation. Uh, I also look, I, whenever I look at, at images, I always look at what can I do with this image to make it better than the photograph. All right, I love this. I'll be, I think I'll get rid of the posts. I just don't like that in a natural setting such as this. But I'm going to take these mountains, I'm going to push them further back so they feel more receded. And because we were, it was so, such an incredibly beautiful day, I think mean, it was about 82, uh, I was that basically painting back that direction. And uh, I think as I finished, I walked around and saw this image and went, I'm going to grab a shot of that. So uh, one of the things is the proportion is a little bit different. This is much more squatty than this. This is longer. This is an 18 by 24, kind of a, Kind of a rosy, dusty rose color, similar to flesh tone if you look at it, but a little bit more. So I am going to, instead of this being pretty much in the middle, I'm going to bring it over to about here, and we're going to change some things. Also, this line is very close to the center. I'm going to bring it down. So I have the option. I can either extend this or condense this. I'm going to condense this. So let's. Get a horizon in here. It's actually not a horizon, it's a, it's a horizontal. Slight angle to it. And we'll get a little bit of the top of that. Uh, I'm using my little number two uh, rosemary kind of, I think this is a bright and I almost never use brights, but I but they're fun to sketch with actually. Okay, now right about in here, I'm just going to do a more erratic drawing than I usually do. Kind of a little more free form, okay? And I know from experience that in many instances I move things as I paint them. Um, I know I've mentioned many times, but I usually approach these demonstration paintings as I would if I were doing plein air, primarily because of the time frame. The time frame is very similar to a plein air time frame. I'm not using uh, basically the mountains kind of come in here. The ground plane is going to be about, uh, about here. And yeah, that feels pretty good. And then we have some interruptions in here. I might want to move the mountains up just a touch, but I don't know. And this. And then this mirror images, we have very still one. It's like, it's still, but it's got just a little movement, which I actually prefer, truthfully. I don't like perfect mirror images. Um, I like a little bit of distortion um, just because I think it adds something. So that's about all I'm gonna get in there right now. The rest of it I'm gonna do with paint. And so we're gonna start with a nice big old number 12 here. Uh, let's see, we grab a 12 flat. That was a 12 filter. So I'm going to grab this 12 flat. I'm going to start with the sky. And I kind of like the color. Uh, I've, I've laid out a full color palette, an array of colors today. Everything from a warm white and white to Naples to yellow ochre to a uh, yellow Hansa to a uh, cad red light hue to a cad red hue. Those are in crimson. Uh, Ultramarine blue, light blue by Dick Blick. And uh, sap green, and then I actually added in a little uh, raw sienna today because I really saw these colors in here, which I could get with ochre, but I'm going to use some raw sienna. And then burn number, not a salt, but burn number. So just so we begin, let's get the sky. And for that, I'm using a little of the what I have the warm white and the light blue together, and I'm going to see what this comes out. Good. You can probably hear the brush, which is fine. You can tell that means I'm rubbing. If you can hear it, that means I'm working, working it in. And that's primarily because it's dry. I have not added any turf. I have not added any uh, sapphire oil, any sort of medium to it. So it's very dry paint. 
And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. And it, it just it means you have to use a little bit more elbow grease, a little bit more work to get the paint to go down. And right now, I don't mind that at all. So I'm gonna scrub it in here. Kind of a, what we would call a scumble. Scumble just means you're basically brought, let, and rubbing the paint down as opposed to literally delicately painting it down. So, the reason I stopped right before the horizon is because I wanted to get a little lighter. So I'm going to take a little yellow, Naples yellow, and a little bit of the, um, just a, a little bit more of the uh, warm white and go right here. And you can see how light that is. Now, you can see it's pretty dry. That's why I did that. So, you don't, I don't want it to be that dry. I want it to be, so if we just go back and rub it. And I'll rub it right up into the sky. The sky color, I should say. So, what I've done is I've given myself a gradation there. And once I have that sky in, I can kind of lay in a, a base tone. And so uh, when I look at this, it's made up of basically three values, these mountains and tones. One is kind of the raw earth tone. The other is what I would call the base tone. It's kind of a dead green. And the third is kind of a soft kind of gray, blue, violet uh, for the shadows. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come close to what I call that dead gray green. And I've got the sky color still in my brush at this point. So I can use that right adjacent to the where I've mixed up the sky with that sky color. I'm going to add more light blue, maybe a little bit of a, of a raw sienna to it. And that gave me, actually, that gave me kind of a nice color. I don't know if it's going to be what I want, but I'm going to at least take a look at it. You know what? I'm going to stay with it. My word. I'm just kind of. Shocked that I hit what I wanted to on the first try. And you notice I'm using this brush in different ways. It, it helps because otherwise you end up with a pretty darn boring kind of edge characteristic. So I'm getting different kinds of edges as I paint, but simply the way I lay the brush down, whether I stroke it downward whether I push it upward, whether I bring it along the horizon. So we're going to kind of rub this color into where I think the mountains go. And hopefully it's lighter than that color. It's probably a little more colorful than I want. Uh, but I'll see what happens as we move along. I usually kind of just go for it in the beginning and then adjust if I need to. And what you will find is the more you guys work, the more you paint, closer you're going to be on your first try. You're not going to be as far off. Where a lot of times when you're first painting, you're way up. And generally what I find uh, is you're a little too light. Excuse me, you're a little too dark. A little too contrary. Particularly in the backgrounds. Particularly in the backgrounds. Because we want to push, we're playing games with reality. We're using the knowledge of what atmospheric perspective truly is. And we're using that literally to push something back. So that might be even a little darker than what I don't know. But what I want to do is I want to start moving forward. Now there's kind of some beautiful ochres and darks. I'm going to start anchoring in with some darks right in here. All right. And I have two pots mixed. I have this pot and I have this pot. So kind of right next to them on my palette, I will mix a dark. You look at something like this and you say, "Why, well, that's close to black, okay? Which it apparently is. But I know what cameras do. And cameras will distort darks very often. So I don't want it to be as dark as it looks. Uh, so I'm keeping some of the other colors in my brush and then I'm mixing a dark. So I know that's not gonna come out too dark because I know that I'm gonna be able to go darker. All right, so, so let's kind of figure where this goes. Let's take this spot right here, which is right off this. So we're going to move it over, and we're going to kind of push that spot right in there. And it's kind of a neutral. That, 
as I laid it down and put the little on the warm side, all, I, all I'm doing here is just having just a touch more blue. And we're just going to kind of smudge some of these darks back in. Kind of rub them again. I don't like to be too definitive to um, have everything exactly where it is. I'm kind of feeling out placements, so to speak, as I lay this in here, knowing that I might change it. Simply because it doesn't feel right. And it's it's it will be an adjustment. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be what you would think of as a redo. There's another dark right below it, right about in here. <clears throat> So these darks serve as, as kind of drawing elements, as far as I'm concerned. I use them, I use them very much in the way an individual might use a, um, a line. So they're drawing it. I'm drawing with it. Now, let's kind of come under these. So we're going to come from here. There's going to be a long stretch right in here. There's going to be a little bush in here. Same color. Don't start over varying your colors too much in the beginning at all. Keep things unified. Unified, it'll help you unify and bring color harmony. And you can push, start to push things further apart as you go along if you feel you need to. And that's, that's gonna be a judgment call once you get enough of your painting going. Initially, we don't have enough on here for me to be able to judge this as to whether it's exactly where I want it or not. So, constantly remixing that color because I thought I had enough, but I don't. It's just basically blue and brown mixed in with what I already have in the brush. And then you get a reflection of that right below it. We're going to talk a little bit about reflections and the different kinds of reflections that occur and the different kinds of water. This water is pretty darn still, and it makes a, not quite a mirrored reflection, but you can start with the idea of it being exact. I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit. But nothing is exact right now, you can probably tell that. So down here, this, I'm gonna reflect this up right here, and it dissipates. And then we have a little bit of a line here, some, some, sh some shadows that kind of move across. And then almost the same kind of dark. I'm adding just a little bit of medium because the paint is so dry. And I want to I want to get it down there a little bit bolder. So we're going to go back kind of into the trees. We're going to just indicate some of the darks. And so you can always play. You just kind of take your brush. Move it around a little bit, mess around, so to speak, and don't be afraid. I just threw some bread into it. Uh, just because I felt like I feel warms, I feel color variations, why not start with them a little bit? I know I sound like I'm, I'm contradicting some of the stuff I'm saying, but we're painting shadows, and within the shadows, and I'd rather paint these shadows too much of a shadow and have to come back over it later. One of the things you can be really timid. Boy, I see some. As I'm, it's really interesting. I hadn't looked at that area over in here where the lights are. I see a lot of really hot colors in there, and that's going to be fun. That's going to be actually some fun to kind of throw some nice, rich, warm colors back in there in the lights, because everyone thinks of trees as well. They're green, you know. No. Certain kinds of foliage is very green, and other kinds of foliage is not very green at all. It's maybe more ochre, more orange. One of the cool things about paint landscapes, you get this wonderful variation of tones, particularly in, in fields and in trees, you get these great tonal variations. So that's just kind of scrub. See, that's way too dry. So what I'm doing is I had just a, just barely let my brush go into the turf and look at it. So I'm still rubbing it in. It's not real runny, but 
it's so much easier to kind of move around now. This is all with this number 12. Number 12, Rosemary. Flat. Now, you could be using a filbert. You don't have to use a flat. I like flats. I like filberts. I generally don't use rounds too much. Um, it's funny, I did it as a student when I was in school, and as I got away from it, I explored brushes and different things, and now I almost exclusively use flats. It's just, it's, it's how it feels to you is really what that all comes down to. It's not that there's a right or a wrong, because uh, I know artists that use strictly brights, and I don't like brights at all. So, there's two step for me. Now, so we're starting to get kind of, I like to think of my paintings almost always when I start as somewhat abstract. Yeah, it, there's an abstract of quality, but if I begin to squint where my eye, so to speak, um, I will notice a similarity from what I'm putting down on my canvas to what I'm looking at to paint. Okay, let's kind of keep coming forward a little bit. I want to kind of get this embankment. It's, it tends to be warm, so I'm starting with a raw sienna and a little bit of I actually went a little too far. A little bit of the uh, cad orange hue. Now, this is going to be too dark, and but I don't care. <laughs> and it's not that dissimilar, truthfully, to the um, color of the board that, or canvas that I'm painting on. I did not. I just I have a bunch of canvases, and I know a lot of people have asked me this before. Do you, you stain your canvas based on what you're painting. The answer is really no. Uh, occasionally I do, but really most of the time it's no. I don't. I like I have several canvases already stained, and I just happened to pick this one up this morning. That's just a rough idea as to how that sits. But I also see a little bit of that tonality come right down below it in here. So let's kind of at least plop it in there. There. There's going to be a little area right there. And we'll adjust it as we go. And a little bit back here. Uh, a, a mistake I used to make, and I, I know a lot of people that are just getting going in landscape make, is they want the beginning to look as good as the finish. Meaning, so they're really critical at this particular point. And well, it doesn't look like that. You know? The point, the point is, is how it looks at the end, not how it looks at the beginning. So that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for a good finish. Yeah. So I've been into this for just about 20 minutes now. Maybe no, but yeah, not quite 20 because of our time delay here. So let's kind of, I'm going to mass in and that, that large tree as it appears in the reflection. That's, it's a little darker than I wanted. Yeah, a little bit. So maybe add a little, a little bit of light blue to it. Let's, and then let's just get it in there. Comes down. It's still running. I, it's interesting. Um, process, which is what I'm doing here. Uh, sometimes I decide I want to go really super bold and I will go really thick right off the bat. It just depends on how I feel at that particular time that I'm painting this. Um, so, in, this is a faster way to paint. So generally when I paint on location, I will start thin and thick. Okay, let's let me move around a little bit there. We'll add just a little bit of turf. I'll get some other 
some of this up in here. That looks okay. Right there, there. You want to get that kind of that mirror image characteristic going on. So now that we've got this kind of cool little abstract beginning, let's take the water and get a little bit of tone. Because we're gonna, I gotta start killing that tone. So I'm gonna take the blue and the warm white as I did when I first started. I'm adding a little bit of um, linseed to it this time. Not linseed, I'm sorry, safflower, because I wanna get it in there faster. Not good. Let's go right here. Right. So we're coming right down, right down from here. And a little bit bolder, add a little bit more blue into it. This way I don't have to do too much painting later. Just kind of hit hit and miss. Be kind of somewhat aggressive. As the blue moves, it gets bluer. It all actually it goes bluer faster, even. so I can take more of that light blue and just move it right into that color, change the color. Up here, a little piece of light right there, or a little, we can find little pieces later on to put in here. Uh, it gets bluer as it moves down. It gets almost into a violet. So I'm adding more light blue. I'm even going to add a little um, ultramarine to it as we move down right about in here. No, nope. I'm going to add more ultramarine. There we go. What brush are you using? I, I have used only one brush so far. It's the number 12. Because it's bold, I can get a lot of paint down quickly, and I don't want to overdefine anything. All those reasons. Also, a lot of times I hear people will ask, how do I keep my stuff from looking overworked? Start like this. Start more abstracted. Most people, the reason people generally don't do it is confidence. They don't have the confidence that they can go back and correct it and fix it. Um, again, you can. And to get away from any characteristic of overwork, you really should. Because that's probably the biggest culprit in creating pieces that tend to look overworked. Is uh, very simply using trying to overkick it and be too exact right off the bat. And, you know, a lot of times when I have time to go back, a lot of times I'll go back and work on things like just the interaction of the edge, this particular edge. I may, when I first lay it in, I may leave something out. In fact, I usually do. And it's usually not on purpose. It's usually, it just happens. So. As it goes down, I still want to get darker. So we're going to add a lot of ultramarine, maybe just that touch of illusory crimson. Now I'm going to go right to it. No, I'm going to go darker still. Whoa, I got way too purple. So, but I kind of like it. Let's see, what, let's see if I can make it work. I kind of like that color. I've exaggerated the color quite a bit. So I'm going to take, add some more blue to it, and a little bit more of that warm white. And we're going to move it up. Play it set. See if I can make it work. And that's what you do. You add enough. See if you can get it going. It's working okay, actually, I think. I haven't really stepped back and looked at it, but. I kind of like it, even though it might have a little bit more green in it, I decided to make it a little bit more lavender. So what the hell, just throw a little green into it. So let's see what that, that's just going to dull it down. What 
The green counteracts the red and the violet. Just move the paint back and forth until you get the, the look you want. Okay. That gets a lot lighter up towards the top. I think what I'm going to probably have to do is move some of this stuff up. And that's why I told you I don't care if it's exactly what you might consider right in the beginning. Because I could spend all that time making it right and realize later I need to do something more with it. Not working. Okay, so it's coming along. We're kind of we're kind of at the stage. Right in here, I need to bring those trees up, and we'll add the lights. But before I do, let's get a little bit of this ground plane in here. But before we get the ground plane, let's kind of get those ochres. So starting with um, maples, bring a little ochre to the maples, and then I'm going to take a look. And that's okay. It's a little like probably a little lighter and a little duller. So let's try that. Still feels a little green. It's because I have so much other color in the brush. So I added just a touch of warmth to it. It's, it's warm, the sunlight is very warm. So um, I add, and for the warms, I'm just using a little bit of the cat orange and ochre. Bring a little bit down here. So I really messed around with that color from where I started. You almost have to. You almost, you just, you know, you think you're going to be right and um, you're wrong. That's why I go back to paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong. I always assume I'm wrong. And I'm more surprised when I'm right. So, get some up. This stuff going on. I might come in a little closer. No, I probably need to step in the front. Try not to. Let's leave that alone for a second. I'm going to go back to the back to the mountain now. And I think I'll grab a, oh, let's grab an eight, an eight flat. You know, if I have a six, I don't see a six. And here we go. Six. Flat, and we're gonna kind of. I'm gonna lay the shadows in back in here. So the shadows, I want to keep very blue. To, to, you know why? What color is the sky? Blue. So to make anything feel like it belongs in the distance, keep it closer to the sky color, which it actually is. So I'm just gonna kind of arbitrarily, as I see it, put them in. A shadow. Whoops. Had to mix it up. No, got too dark. There we go. I think I'm going to throw a little more lavender into it. It just feels a little too blue for me. There we go. Let's a little darker. This is your value. Assess, you're assessing as you put it down. I'm close. Still not quite there. Close. Okay. Spending more time mixing because I was just having trouble. But I'm painting into wet paint. So if I if I lay down three or four strokes, what's happening? It's picking up that paint that I'm laying it into. So I want to be careful. I got a few strokes, but after I pick up enough of that paint, I dilute this color. Now, just by a light touch, I don't put it down as hard. I'm not as strong. There we go. I think I, I need more warm back in those hills. I just realized it. I'm not sure. I'm not positive about it. But that's just the gut level I'm getting as I paint. And as I'm trying, I'm not doing this more or less like I am if I'm uh, plain air painting. I'm not worried about the exact accuracy of the placement because hills can, you know, hills can vary. 
Um, but what I do want to do is get kind of the activity of that form going on, because it is form. The light is coming from here. Why do I know that? I can look at the tree. So these shadows are being cast from something over here. The same is happening in the mountain, back in the hills. It's receiving light from the left. And you could probably play forever on these. And then I go back and adjust them. Hopefully we'll have the time to. But now we've got kind of the feeling of the shadows in the hills. So I can, this is where I gotta get those in before I do anything up in here, by the way. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna move into the, to the tree. And I might as well keep the eight in my hand or the six, let me grab an eight. Um, I'm gonna go, it's quite warm. So I'm gonna start with a raw sienna and maybe throw just a hint of green into that raw sienna. And then let's take a look. I'm going to add more medium because it's not sticky with a light touch. So I don't want to press it in there. I don't want to push it. It's working. Now I could add a little bit of red here and there when I see it. If I see it leaning one direction or another, I will augment the color that I'm working with. I won't stay that exact color if I feel as I'm painting that and just a quick stand back, and it looks okay. You know, I'm not too far off. There's a lot more color going on in there than I'm painting. Uh, hopefully, I will get to it. And that's the that's the layering process. That's that enjoyable where you, you kind of zen out and you just get into the layering. Oh, a little bit more red. Oh, a little bit more. And you gotta every so often stand back and take a look and say. Well, I went too far. Well, I didn't go far enough. I could, I really have, I can go a little further. I can take it. So all of that stuff is, that's the part where you, sit, where you do a lot of evaluating, by the way. And I think I've, I've mentioned in the past, one of the big differences in studio painting or a painting that you're going to do over a period of time and a plain air piece is that evaluation process. Uh, that evaluation process is crucial in a studio painting. And in a plein air piece, generally you don't have a tremendous amount of time to evaluate. You, there is, you need to get some. And I actually, uh, when I'm painting with a group, I try and make a point of showing everybody how often I get back, how often I step back from the piece. Because you can stay on top of that, get back, and realize that you what you were doing then isn't working that well. And then all of a sudden you get all ticked off because you've wasted, you know, 30 minutes where if you put two strokes down and you stood back, you might have caught it earlier. So just stepping back a little bit. Um, I just and when for me stepping back here when I'm working is maybe two feet, three feet. Um, if I'm working on location, I may get back six feet. Even on my little 12 by 16s. Get back, man. Just don't stay on top of your painting the whole time. Quote Paul McCartney, get back. A little green drawn into that color, a little more ochre. So out of one little pot area, I've got two or three different color variations. A little bit more green. So the green has a lot of kind of warmth in it. It's not a, it's not what you would call a green that you would think of as green. So if you saw it on a, if I if I had it on a palette and you walked up to it, you wouldn't really call it green. Yeah. Over here, there's not as much red I can see in those trees. They tend to be darker, but partly because there's a lot of activity going on on top of them, so we don't see a lot underneath. Uh, but I do want to get the tops of them, the way they interact with the sky, because I didn't get that initially. So I've gone back to kind of this darker color here, and we're just going to take it out. And if I need to, I can infiltrate some of these areas up in here, but generally I'm going to go 
kind of in here. I'm going to go right there, behind, and I have to look behind those tree branches. They're, they're overlapping. Now it's a little warmer when it gets up in here. So I went back to the warmth, similar to this color that I have here, and we're going to get a little bit of these fly away kind of little tufts that we've got up in there that kind of unify down into the bulk of the trees themselves. And just get that kind of edge, kind of a rough edge. Just some variation going on there. So we're, we're getting kind of the activity of the trees. And what you're doing is you're getting, you're getting it to a point and then you're moving on to another area. Don't sit and go and what what happens often, and it happens a lot with figure work, but it also happens in plain air. Something starts working, and you're go you're so damn pleased with it that you don't want to um, let go of it. You keep going back and you want to fix it and make it even better. It's working. Oh my god. You want to keep going with it? You don't want to do that. If it looks like it's starting to work, move on to another area and then go back and look at it and see if it is working as good as you thought it might be. Because I'll bet it's not. Okay, I've, I step back for a second. This st is starting to work. I always use the word starting because I'm never convinced it's working exactly the way I want it. Um, I do need to come in with a, a dark in here. So it's going to work its way in. We can bring some of that dark back up in here, do an overlap. So we paint darks and then lights and then darks and then lights. And we do that for days, hours, until we're happy with it. And once we're happy with it, then we walk away and we're worried about other areas. So it's basically shaping up. Now let's get, there's this beautiful kind of yellow, I don't know, what color is that? That's almost a Naples. So I'm going to start with just the Naples. Now my Naples tends to be really, really um, dry. I'm not sure why, it just is. So Naples is going to be a little light. So if I look at that, I'm going to warm it up with just a hint of a cad orange. Just a little bit. Because again, we want that red characteristic, that red light. It's still pretty dry. I'm going to look right here. Where is that? Right below this. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say right in there. You don't want every stroke to go up and down because that can get really boring. So sometimes I'm going to take it up and down. Sometimes I'm going to move it a little bit sideways. It's hit and miss. Sometimes it just barely touches. And it moves its way down to about in here, right about in there. So let's warm that up. Take that light up. Bring it down here. Just the way it's, a lot of this is just the way you lay the brush down. It almost disappears. So we don't get a lot of it in here, and then it picks up again as we start to get over. So you start to get that feeling of that shimmer of light up in there. Back behind it, I'm going to take raw sienna and mix it right in that color. But back behind it, back in here, you're starting to get, now that's a little too raw. It's, by raw, it's a little too orange. So I took some green and mixed it into it there. Just mellowed it out a little bit. When I, when I use that term mellowed out, I mean, uh, Get away from kind of the acid quality of the harshness of a specific color. Now, with, with that color that I just mixed, I could probably take a little bit more green into it and push it right in here. And it feels, feels about right. Okay, let's see if there's any more that I need to do. With that. I'm going to step back. In here, a lot of interesting color variations, so I can kind of come back with 
this color in here, and I could brighten it up in here, and tickle it here, the brightness right in here. It's definitely over in here as it comes down and up, break that edge. Okay, I don't want to go too far with it right now. What I do want to do is I want to start establishing some of this ground plane. The, the greens, the yellow greens, I have to be careful about going too green. This is where sap works better than meridian. Meridian is extremely green, extremely acid, and you can use it, but you very often have to kind of, you know, intermix a little bit of warmth in there to kind of tone it down a little bit. So I took a sap, a raw sienna, and I'm just looking now. I need a little bit more, like a little maple yellow and some ochre into it. Let's see. Uh, up here. It's not light enough. Maple's yellow back into it. And maple's yellow, again, very, very stiff. This particular one is that I have. So I just, when your paint gets really stiff, you just have a little more medium. It's not a, it's not a problem. I know I've heard people say, well, I can't paint with this. It's too stiff. You know, that's, what, that's why we have mediums. We use more of the medium. I threw some, some uh, yellow Hansik into that, by the way, to, to brighten it up. But now it gets kind of, I don't want to, you've got to get enough warms in your greens, man. They can really get, just overpower you to the point where they're just uncomfortable. Who would think green can be uncomfortable? Huh? Oops. Now, as it moves down in here, it almost gets kind of brown. So I can actually take and mix a little of my umber back into that color, and we'll bring it right down in here. And then we get the beautiful, light, wonderful, wonderful, rich color. But you want to build to it. You don't want to pop that in there. So I'm going to go back with kind of some of the greens that I was playing with. Right about in here. And here, the yellow, a little more white, yellow Hansa, maybe a little ochre, because I don't want it to get too, I used to yellow by itself, it can, it can get overpowered. So we're going to just do a little bit of this, just kind of, and right down here. Not quite, a little bit more green. We put this, we put this in here, this one. Okay, let me get the bright, not that quite, but I want to go almost that far. A lot of Naples into it, and maybe a little bit of cat orange back into the colors that I was already using. Let's see what happens, okay? That's a little, little more intensity, so a little more yellow, a little more cat orange. A little more cat orange. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go for broke down kind of push my colors a little bit there. Get some nice, interesting warms in areas such as this. By warms, I, I mean brown, earth tone warms, not red warms. It comes back in here, almost has a little flavor of light as it moves from here. Back up to right here. Here. Little wings that are catching just not a ton of light, but a little bit. So it's it's not as vacant as it looks in here. Even right under that tree, right there, we get from this, we get wings that kind of come up. So we're breaking up that space. We get a lot more color in here. Let's Take this area that I was working in, and let's start to bring it down. I'm going to go a little stronger with it, but as I mix the orange in, I also mix ochre. And ochre kind of keeps it from getting acid. Bring 
bring it over here. Then we want to come down hit this. And there's a little piece of light happening right here. Not light enough, but that's okay. I don't want it. I want to amplify that light in a second. And then there's some weird little greens in there too. So I'm just, you know, just I just took that color and add a little bit of green to it. And we just it gives it a little bit more light. Now we get kind of a besides this, you get a little raking raking light back behind it. So but nowhere near as strong. So I just mixed that color in with kind of the greens and we'll take it from here. And bring it down in here. And then down where it gets brighter. And for that ochre, little Naples, a little bit of warmth, not too much, right about in here. This comes down, we get the bank, we get a little bit of warmth. Okay, let's keep going. Let's, and I, I need to get this area in. This is kind of some of the dirty greens right in here. So let's kind of push them in there, right in here. Okay, get the green there. Again, I'm not pushing it as light as it's gonna go. I'm, I'm leaving that, let's see where we're at here. Okay, 45 minutes into it. I'm just saying that because I know I started a little late today. So, started about, about 10 after and it's not quite, yeah, we're, so I'm a little behind where I think I should be. You see guys? Um, but it's starting to take on that look. It's what you do from here on out that's really going to matter. This is the setup. So if I were to uh, say what I've accomplished in the first 45 minutes is I pretty much set it up. And in the last 45, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on some of the refinement areas. Looking at the spot here, I'm looking off this bush. There's a dark on the top of that piece of land, and it comes down and some cools in there. So mix a little bit more blue into that color, and we'll kind of pull some of those cools down. Something bothers me right here. Let me look. Uh, okay. And you know what? Uh, what I just got through saying, something bothered me right there. It's because I took a step back. It's not because I just all of a sudden I took a step back. I paralyzed the whole the whole image, not concentrating on any area, and that area jumped out to me to be a little bit something wrong with it. And then I looked back at my reference and I said, "Okay, I see it." So that's when you jump back and you fix it. So you read your painting first and your subject second. Keep that in mind. It's your painting that matters. So you don't have to depict your subject 100%. If your painting looks good, it doesn't matter. I've often said, unless the person is there with you, they're not going to know that there was a specific Thing that goes on there. So let's start to intensify some of the light in here. And for that, white and yellow and a little ochre. And I'm going to see what happens when I just do this. Now I will re establish the shadows. 
and clarify it a little bit more. Right up here. Okay. So that's actually thicker paint, by the way. Just the painting paint's getting a little bit more impasto at this particular time. So I'm kind of delicately placing that paint down. Now, bothers me kind of in here. I think there's some more foliage that happens in there. And here it comes out. We need to establish the darks on that ground plane, which is right here. So if I go straight down from that tree, there's a nice big dark right here. And for that, brown, blue, mixed in with a little bit of a of a white or a light blue, some sort of a gray, because I don't, it's not as dark. I may go real dark on it right at the end. But right now I'm just kind of comfortably trying to fit it in. You get a little break here and there. Distinguish that, get a little reflect, whatever is up is down. So if there's a reflection up somewhere, look for it in the water. I, I'm sorry, if there's a, I didn't mean if there's a reflection. If there's, if there's a reflection in the water, look up to see where it's coming from. Because you will you will see that and not it's it's very common. It's not a, it's not like it's an unusual phenomenon. Um, a little bit more pasta right there. So I'm gonna clarify those shadows a little bit now because I was basically painting the lights so and I, I need to clarify the shadow because I started to lose it. So blue brown mixed into this pot of kind of dark color that I have over here. A little bit more earth tone and also medium mixed in with it this time. A little bit, a little bit more brown. Let's establish that shadow of the boulder. It comes pretty much almost over the center of the tree, which I didn't have it. But I've moved things around too. Well, Laurel wants to know if you connect all of your darks. Not always. It depends. I, I, I don't. I, the darks right now are all very similar tones. In other words, I haven't mixed a whole bunch of their dark variations. They're all pretty gray and pretty drab uh, because I'm pronouncing the lights and I'm making the lights. As I connect them in here, where I can see them, where I feel they belong connected, yes, then I connect them. But to say I connect them, no, if, if if I see it, like I see this, this from here to here, and I here, here, and I don't have it here. So I need to reestablish that. And there's one of those darks that's kind of a shadow that just fades away. All right, so we got that one in there. Then there's a shadow above it, which joins it, which comes from about here, and eventually joins that at about this point. A little bit of a dark right there. So I'm, I'm looking to where they do connect, I'm connecting them to answer your question. I think that's actually a really good point. Uh, if I can simplify and I can make them connect, I will connect them. But if they, if they don't connect, I don't. Um, I may at the end, now I can really start pushing some of my lights down in here. So let's do that. I think before I do that, I think I'm going to get into this area right here, which is kind of ochre and white and a little bit of a 
she's infected. I see worms everywhere right now. I don't know if that's just me and I'm having problems with that, but I'm seeing a lot of worms. And even, even here and there like that, I'm beginning to see a warmth. Yeah, that's pretty good. It also seems to come down. You know, uh, you, someone asked a question about connecting my darts. I think this, you could, you could have asked that about the lights because a lot of these lights are connected like this comes up. This is the top plane of this embankment here, right, right there. Hot plane, oh my God, where is it? A variation. And then it works its way up into where that green is. So I would be kind of gingerly kind of put some of these areas in, maybe put a little bit more red occur as it goes up behind. And eventually works its way into this area right in here. A little bit of a light right there. Now, the front of that, of this embankment, right about this point, looks like it's turning because right here, it's starting to get some lights. So, thicker paint, a little bit, a little bit more of the uh, medium thrown into it, and a little bit more of the maples. And then I can actually push up in here, and you're, I, I usually refer to this as you, you begin to isolate and particularize at one area over another. In other words, by particularizing, I mean you're looking at that one area. Initially, you're looking at the big bowl, but as you continue to move further and further along in your piece, you look more and more into these areas, and you start to say, okay, it's darker, it's crisper, it's got a little bit more activity. So we're starting, just, it's, for me, it's actually just beginning to feel correct in this particular area. Up in here, I can see a lot more going on. And at this point, it's a matter of how much do I have, how much time do I have to fix some of this stuff. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because, again, I'm trying to relate this as if I am painting this on the spot. And I know that I'm not going to have forever. The other thing is when I'm painting, and particularly something like this in a late afternoon, uh, the light is going to change so rapidly, so rapidly that I have to be bolder and I have to be more indicative with my color notes. I cannot be as as precise as I might be uh, when the sun might not be as low. The lower that sun gets, the faster those shadows are going to move. I remember I was in, in painting in this location. Uh, in the middle of the day, it was, it's fine when you start in the morning. Start in the morning, and the light changes a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. As it, as it moves along, um, what happens is it starts changing more rapidly. Or as it gets towards noon, uh, basically, you've lost the long shadows, and at that point, basically, you're just dealing with kind of refining some of your lights because you already have your, your overall light pattern in there. I can right, see a lot more modeling. A little bit of the dark sneaking its way down right here. A little bit of this shadow moving over just a little bit further. And the shadow kind of comes there. I'm going to get that softer edge. If you don't like that little spot. I don't know what I was thinking. Probably an accident. Probably something I just left. So I'm starting to get, now we get a, a plane change. The top surface, which I'm, I'm pretty accurate with, but then as it comes down, all that foliage comes down onto this plane it starts to receive 
more light. So we're actually going to put a little bit of light in there, right? At this particular point. And it starts to move up here. And you can go back, I can and find worms, if you can find little worms to throw in, because I can see little tickle, tickles of, of orange right about in here. And that's generally the type of growth this is. I could spend quite a bit of time just in that area, but I can't. I, can't. I don't have the time, and if we're on location, I wouldn't have the time either. So we're gonna go back on this on this area right in here. Go back to the shadow right here. This is the, I guess, if someone were, were counting focal points, that area right in there where all this bright light is happening would be considered the focal point. And that's why you would probably want to go into an area like that and develop it as far as you possibly can. A little bit. You gotta get enough variation in there so it doesn't look. Um, oh, I guess the word is you want it to look convincing. Uh, now, let's get over in here. Let's move over in here. Oh, let's get the. I haven't hit the brightest spot. Okay. I've got just about thirty minutes. Just see you guys. That's so I'm looking at. What can I accomplish in 30 minutes? Okay. And that's, if you're on location, that's what you're doing, by the way, you guys. That's exactly what you're doing. I've got about other, before things get totally out of hand and it changes too much. I've watched people sit there and try and paint a sunny painting and spend the whole day on it. And I've walked up to them and looked at them and said, why are you still, the sun has changed. It's not even the same lighting. Um, so you want to make sure that when you're dealing with sun and sunlight, that you, you really have got about a maximum, and you're really pushing it at about three hours. And about three hours, you just about, it it's, becomes a different picture. Now, if you're going to go back two or three days in a row, and when I do super large paintings on location, that's what we do. We go back more than one day and doing it in the same time. Okay, so I, when I stand back, that begins to mimic what I see. And as it moves down to this little bush, it's damn near as bright. So we want to, that's the best, nice little edge. Always like it when I get a good edge. I'm kind of stupid, but I know what I mean. Okay, we got that. That's starting to work. We can bring a little bit more light back in a couple of these areas. This could get amplified, meaning uh, it could be a little bit more intense. And as I lay paint on top of paint, I'm adding more of the sapphire oil or solvent-free gel, either one. I want kind of a messed up edge if I can get this in here, because these little weeds have that characteristic. So, and I can't get them, with a, you've got to really it's a matter of learning how to use your brush effectively. Practice weeds. Practice things like that. And that's how you get better at it. You don't get better at it by doing it one time and say, well, I got it. And they do it for years and they still don't got it.
something right in here isn't right. Okay? I think it might be the reflection. I need to get some of that reflection, some of this. And that's a better color, too. A little more bright. And that reflection is about here. Not quite. I need a little more orange in that color. There we go. That's that. I'm getting a little bit of the reflections. See, it's starting to work there. It's not as bright as it should be. And it, this is completely wrong because that should be the reflection of that of this, which is actually right here. There. And feeds over. Laurel is asking um, if you ever take photos during your outside painting time to help you remind you of your light patterns. You know what? It's yeah, I do. But what I have found over the years, I kept I, you. Everybody's a little different. A lot of people feel like well, I'm going to go in and I'm really going to make that. I used to think that. I don't do it. Usually, if I go back inside and work on it, I usually work maybe 10, 15 minutes at about the most. Just because the enthusiasm level is gone. Um, and you just, I can't get that back. And the other thing is what I've learned is I want to keep the kind of integrity that I got, the way I edited, what I, the choices that I made, I want to keep that intact and not turn it into something uh, that I would do as, if, otherwise I'll just do a studio painting of it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, yeah, I do. Uh, but you know what? At what point are you going to take that photo? Are you going to take that photo before you start or as you finish? Because the light will have changed, I guarantee it. And so that's an interesting uh, thing to deal with. The light does change. And one of the nice things about painting a location is as that light changes, I use it. If, if I see something that I really like and I want to add into it, unless it completely violates the lighting, I literally will go, I'll use it. I'll go in there and get it, get it working. A little bit of tonal variation back in here. Not too much. If I had time, I could go back and do a lot of interesting things back in this area. But I do want to kind of uh, I, I want to leave myself enough time for this and this, and I'm still way underdone, in my opinion, in this area. I can see a lot more that I could be doing to get it really working well. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just deciding what, I, what I'm going to do right now. So I'm thinking. Every now and then I actually stop and think, you guys. Um, a lot of it truthfully is just pure spontaneous. And you're just, and that's what you're trying, trying to build that that muscle of I, I love a memory muscle, so to speak. So you just do it. And you know, hopefully it begins to work. Sometimes it's not gonna work. Some things work better than others. You've all seen that. You've all seen that in things that I've done. And it's, you know what I find really interesting? Um, and I don't want to... Somebody wrote on a piece, and I'm not going to say what it was, that they thought it was their favorite piece that I've done, I've done on these things. And it's interesting. I thought it was the weakest I've, I've done. Um, and it goes to show you that it's a judgment call. It's not, you know, what one person thinks is great, another person might think, and this happens to you also, by the way. What you think is, is really good, 
Someone else might have, someone else might look at it and go, huh? And what you think is really kind of kind of mediocre, someone else might look at it and absolutely love it. So I'll never ever forget, and I've told this story so many times to people that are taking classes with me. First gallery I was ever in probably over 30 years ago. Uh, it was a very good gallery. Very good. I, I was honored to have been asked to be in it. And after about a year, I really hadn't sold. I think I sold maybe one piece, maybe 10, sold one. Um, I was doing a lot of illustration at the time, so I wasn't destitute, didn't need it. But, um, so I, I went in to take my stuff out of the gallery, reluctantly. I, I mean, they didn't want me to. I just figured, why stay in here? They told me I was getting a lot of good reactions. And uh, so as I'm walking out of the gallery, I said, I think Anna was with me at the time. And I said, how's this person doing? And they said, well, you know, that's our best seller. I, and I purposely picked what I thought was the weakest piece in the gallery. And come to find out, it, this particular individual was their best seller. And I, they said, well, this person's 70 something. He's got an incredible following. And, um, and so I remember walking into the gallery thinking, man, I'm never going to be able to figure this, this part of, of the business of fine art out. I'm never going to be able to figure it out. And I, I truly don't know if I have. Um, because it is so subjective. And that's kind of what I was getting at about an individual that really liked this one piece of mine. And I thought it was maybe, it's so subjective. You can't tell. Um, I, I, I've taken pieces to gallery that I was almost looking to give them. And uh, Anna convinced me to give them. And this happened twice. And both those pieces sold quickly. Yet I didn't think they were that strong. And the gallery thought it was. And so I was looking at it from my personal aesthetics, which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. But at some point, um, I didn't, I, was I embarrassed by the pieces? No. I, I, somebody asked me that one time. They said, were the pieces bad? No, the pieces weren't bad. Um, I would have never, I would have never considered giving it to anybody. I just didn't, I thought I was giving several pieces and these pieces, it happened in two different instances. So it's not, the piece wasn't, um, in my opinion, up to the other pieces that I was giving them. Yet at the same time, and I, one of the, one, this one time it happened, it happened right in front of me. It happened literally. Somebody came in and bought the piece while I was sitting on the floor. And I'm uh, flabbergasted. Um, it was it was a decent piece. It was I, I felt it was too um, I don't drab, I guess. And people came in from Florida and bought this piece. So once again, I was proven um, to be kind of ignorant when it comes to the saleability of certain pieces and the appeal that certain pieces have. What appeals to me, I have a good friend of mine who's a, a wonderful painter, a uh, guy named John Poon. John, John and I talked many, many, many times about what we like to paint. And both of us had this, at least at this particular time, uh, loved the idea of painting old beat up warehouses and things. And yet at the same time, when I've talked to galleries, they go, I don't want that stuff. I can't sell old beat up old warehouses. So uh, when I've done those, those are what I call a labor of love. Those aren't necessarily pieces that. You know, I've done with the idea of, oh, I know this is going to sell. So I don't always paint for that. Sometimes I just mess around too. And I think that's important. I think every artist needs time to kind of play and, and discover things and not always feel like every piece you do is gallery bound.
and keep it out of the time. So we're starting to get I need a little bit of snap right here, a little bit of a little lighter green kind of reflective areas. Right? And I'll bring, I'm going to finish this off at the end, provided I have the time. It's always challenging doing these. You never know. Sometimes I, I think I pick an image and it, I pick it more of a challenge than I do because I think it's a really strong image and they come out better. Sometimes I pick an image because I think it's a strong image and they don't come out as good. Welcome to art. It's just the way it goes. So I'm looking at reflections. I'm looking at the bank. I just took my eye and kind of glanced, and I'm seeing right in here that I need a little bit more pronunciation. And the way it, it reflects a little of this, I think. That's great pink. Okay, I'm gonna go into the trees a little bit. I like to get into the trees, the mountains, the water, those for sure. And if I have any time at all, I could definitely use a little bit of, of extra oomph up in here. Okay, so let's get into the trees. Um, I need to get a little bit more variation in this color. Then we're gonna start with some linear stuff to get that, that going. But let's start with a little color variation. Um, I'm going to take that ochre and try the warm white all by itself. I want to see something. Huh? Huh, not bad. So I'm basically going one stage lighter, which is often what I do. I will often sneak up on those lights forever. That's too light, too fast. Go too light, too fast, or too dark, too fast. Too dark, too fast, you poke a hole in it. Too light, too fast, it looks like uh, it might look like a bird craft on it. Just, it just, you don't want it to fit in comfortably. Okay, I made it a little greener this time, but also a little lighter. More ochre and push it in. Kind of Brag the side of the brush a little bit here. Now I see a little warmth right on this side of this tree. I'm just drag that in. Drag it. But when I say drag it, I'm not I'm just kind of smudging it in there a little bit. I don't know what I did here. I don't like that. Stand back. Starts to work. I'm starting to get the the, the feeling and the character that I want. I think back background, I can have a few little subtle darks. There, there. Okay. What else we got? Let's take my little liner here. And dark. And a warm dark. Add a little bit more orange into it. A little and a quick some linear snaps in here. One there, one there, 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 and then there's some little light, little light branches. And for that, I could just take a Naples yellow and mix it right into that color that I'm using. I'm going to take a little hole here. See, sometimes a branch will stick out far enough where it does catch light. And it really adds something. There's little activity. There's little pieces of activity that occur. Okay. Don't want to do too much. I see a little bit more that I could probably play with. Right about here. 
Uh, Lori has a question about, <clears throat> she says, we hear rules all made to be challenged, of course, for instance, with reflections. Do light objects reflect darker and darker objects re reflect lighter? All right, you got to say that again. Do light objects reflect darker? Oh, you're, you're talking in about water. in the water. In the yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do dark I never thought about it. God, now I have to think. Um, truly, I never thought about it. Uh, let me think. I don't think so. I think, now that I'm looking at it, you know, everything's pretty accurate. Everything's pretty close. It's just not as contrasty. If I were to say one thing that happens in reflection, the, the information in the reflection isn't as contrasty. Other than that, I think it's relatively accurate. There's a spot, I don't know why I missed that. Let me see something. Right here, this foliage right here comes up, right there, and then goes up. That's better. Well, I needed that. Okay, now with almost that color, I'm just gonna take turf into the color I was just using, because I see them get pretty yellow. And I think we're gonna start right about here which is further over than I have it now. It's probably I just saw it. Okay, so we're gonna start right about here. Okay. I'm using my little fingers laying down. You can do this and not be afraid because if it doesn't work, you just Wipe it out. And I'm just picking up some of these little snaps that I begin to see. But before I do, up at the top, I kind of have to get fuzzy. It's a nice big bowl of dirt. You don't have to put them all in either, by the way. In fact, you probably shouldn't. You're just editing. And up at the top, with more warm, this is where I wish I had my, I don't have my um, fan brush, so I'm not going to, I'm going to use little brushes and I have a fan. And we're just going to kind of fuzz. Oh, that, that worked pretty well. Up at the top here. And all it is, is one of those reddish colors that I have mixed up with a little ochre and a little bit of a turf. Because you can't paint all those little, those are all just little tiny masses of branches. And we see them more like they're smoke or fuzz or Now we'll add some of the line work, a little bit of it back on top of that. Try and get it to work a little bit. So we'll go in with the uh, same thing I was using here, and we're going to put in a little, little snap here and there. A little bit more of yellow. See, this kind of stuff I'm doing very quickly, and this is the kind of stuff you probably want to spend I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour on. Now, not on location. Not on location, you're not going to spend that long. So, on location, what you were just I probably spent about the time I'm spending here. Mm. You just don't have don't have the time. And some of that, somebody asked, some of that is something I will do after. If I if I, I don't need 
the exact reference to have it. If I, if I get enough of the feeling of the activity down, that's really all I need. And I want to get enough of it down so it looks convincing right now. That's what that's my goal. And I've got just almost 10 minutes that I can do this in if I can get it. But I, I really gotta do it in five because I want to go back and do a little bit of the water. So at this point, sometimes I don't even look. I just get a look at it and then I start saying, okay, I'm just gonna go. Gotta make sure we're painting. See, the key is I'm painting over wet paint. When you paint over wet paint, you pick some of it up. And when you pick it up, you contaminate it and you make. Too much in and then paint some out if you have to. That's about the best way to approach something like this. Especially when they get too thick. Yeah, you gotta be really careful. Now I'm gonna just take the side of this brush. Just because I don't like take time to pick up the other brush. That's the main reason. A lot in here. It's real busy. Ah, it's starting to work. It isn't as busy as it needs to be, but I, I really need to get down into that water now and do a little bit of work down there. So let's do that. Go back to the H and make sure I've got the darks in that I want. And then clean the brush pretty, pretty thoroughly. White. Light blue. Ooh, that might be a good color right there. And a little bit of the um, warm white. Yeah, that's good. Now, what I'm going to do is paint almost up to it. And then, I'm going to mess it up a little bit. Well, if you say it comes down, it gets a little darker, so I hate to my other blue variations. Close to the same color, but then it'd be exactly close to that color. And the darker spots, you stay with the darker color. In the lighter areas, you use your lighter color. Oh, you know what Because I did it, I didn't even catch it. All these reflections happen down here too. So this, if it comes straight down, it will right there. So 
Sometimes I put them in there and don't like them. I just smear them with a brush. Take a big brush and smear it. But there are key marks like this one right here you want to get. Information, although this can stay pretty simple. You don't have to get, get the lights back into it. But there are, if I look at it carefully ahead of time, there are some of these lights, and they're just not in red. But they're in here. They're just getting kind of a feeling of Morel was mentioning that last week you <clears throat> talked about using a not so great photo reference to help push you toward more interpretation. She she used that idea, so I haven't yet. Oh, she, she used it from. Oh, she used you it. You talked yeah. about it last week. No, this is a pretty good photo. So I, the photo from last week though, that you used. Yeah. Was, so. Yeah, it's true. If you um, it's a way to help you uh, kind of start not necessarily rely on. I haven't decided really what I'm going to tackle next week. I kind of want to get back into a figure, but at the same time, um, I haven't decided. So I may surprise myself. I had three photos picked. This was the one I decided upon for today. Um, it was the most colorful. And that was, that was my reason for picking it. It isn't necessarily... I don't always pick... Exact. I'm trying. I always try and look at what I did the week before and not duplicate it in terms of what I'm doing. You're going over? Yeah, I'm over. That's about it, anyway. You know, I probably am not going to get much more done on this. Uh, there's a lot of little things I could fuss on. I would really love the opportunity to come back into that mountain one more time on the lights. So wherever these lights are, maybe just clean them up just a little bit to have that light kind of make it feel. Because I painted the shadows, now I like to paint a little of the lights. The other thing I probably would do is add a little bit of warm here and there so that it doesn't feel like it's just flat one color. But I do like the fact that the mountains are sitting back there. That was one of my goals, is to get them back there. I know I could probably punch some more lights in areas like this. Um, sorry we had a glitch today getting going. Uh, every now and then that happens, it's technology, and we're definitely not technology experts. Um, but when it happens, it happens. And uh, hopefully this worked out okay. It's, it's got a... a Okay, impressionistic feeling. Still, I'm not thrilled I could do a lot more in here. And wrote, this is, like I said, to me, that's the focal point. That's where I would put most of my attention in terms of refinement. Um, this, I could add more. A lot of times, this is really a lot easier to deal with once it dries. Uh, once it dries, you can put that stuff in so much easier. It's, it's always more difficult while it's wet. But, um, I think learning how to do the alla prima while it's all at once wet approach uh, is really, really helpful. So, enjoy everybody. I, I kind of had fun. Hopefully you guys did. Um, I'll look at it, maybe do a little touch-ups on it like I usually do, and uh, post it a little later. So, I usually, if I did want to do touch-ups, a lot of you guys, uh, I usually spend maybe 15 minutes on it, um, very seldom more, just because, again, I want it to feel like the piece, not like a piece I was in the studio and I had two weeks on. So, uh, any event, hopefully that gives you a, a different approach to something, and we'll try something a little bit different next week. If anybody has any suggestions of things you might like to see, I would love to hear.
Um, not that I can do everything. I definitely can't, but uh, I will try. As long as if I think it's something I can accomplish, I'll give it a shot. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy painting.